Aloha, Richard Halverson here. This is ITS 128. And today is October 14th. And uh, let me share my screen. And uh, so here we are, syllabus. Today is the 13th, October. So is this the right? Oh, yeah, 128, October 13th, it must be here. We're in, oh, oh that's right. So um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna finish up uh, all of the labs in five because there's a bunch of those labs at the end and I I, I, didn't, I don't think I've done any, done any of them. Have I? Let's see, uh, let's see, the labs are starting at 514, I think I might've done one of them. Uh, let's see where, what the video looks like. Videos. So we've done we've done the five nine, and I have done five fourteen. Okay, so I guess I'll do a uh, five ten. Oh yeah, I remember. Okay. So let's just go over this. Okay, break and continue. Uh, okay, so so we're doing loops. We're talking about loops, for loops and while loops. So it's the two different two kinds of loops. Um, <clears throat> And I didn't talk about this. I talked about this. Um, um, if you're in the middle of a for loop, or if you're inside of a for loop, um, you know you may you're, you're you you may be writing code where uh, if if something happens like in the middle of the for loop and and you realize you can't go any farther for whatever reason, uh, you may want to just break out of it. You know, right in the middle. Um, <clears throat> And I guess is this a, this is an, this is an example of where you're I don't know you're doing something and as soon as you hit a certain meal cost uh, equaling what the user's amount of money is then you're just going to break out of it and this is inside of a this is inside of this for loop and then uh, this breaks you out of you know this for loop. Okay, so this breaks you out of this for loop and this breaks you out of this for loop. So that's all. And <clears throat> so you can go through this example here and sort of get an idea. Um, and what, what the continue statement does is it will skip all the rest of the stuff in the for loop and go back up to the top again and start, and start with the next iteration. That's what continue does. So break breaks you out continue uh, just skips the rest of the of that current iteration and uh, goes back and goes to the next one. So that's- Professor, yes. may, I, may I ask you, I, I this one, can you please, I'm gonna, I'm posted in the, the chat. I know you, yeah. can you, I know if you look at it, you probably, this one yes how do you i have I, I have trouble understanding this part you have trouble what this part understand it you see i, I put it on in the yes chat. yes yes okay okay very good good question so thank let's you. let's so thank let's you so much because okay. i'm stuck there okay so is this from uh is this from one of the um yes the, okay all right well first of all let's just explain let's just um Yes, yes. First I'll explain and this and then you can run. Sure, then you can. sure okay, yes. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and Thank put you. this into something. What is this? Oh, this was, I was working on something else here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Did, right. Vincent, Vincent and I was working with each other earlier and he's trying to explain to me and then we, we run it through together and then we're stuck in this problem. Very yeah. good. And I want to encourage people to work together. Okay, because that's, that's the best way to learn. And when you're out in the real world, you're very likely going to be in a team. Yeah, I appreciate it. For sure. All right. Yes. Okay. So, yes. So, uh, so, he, so here's a nice program here. And what this is, is, um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to save this, save as um, inside 128. I'm going to call it test. 3.py. Okay, so so this pro this 
this program here, uh, it's, it starts out initializing a variable uh, called result, and it starts out initializing it at zero. And then it, um, it, it loops through uh, n starting at zero, uh, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And so the first time it goes through, it's going to be n is equal to zero. So result here, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, let me open up a command prompt. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to run this program here. Let me go to CD OneDrive desktop. Yes, one, one, two, eight. And here's the program I'm working on right now. Okay, so um, so let's let's just put in some 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 output statements here. So I'm going to say uh, print, and I'm going to do. Can I do that? Oh yeah, okay. I'm going to print um, print one comma and I'll print result okay so so I'm going to print result here and then uh, right here why don't I print n and uh, so I'm going to do um comma n wait I think I can just do it too right two comma n so we can see what it is let's see if this works I think this stuff will work maybe not let's see all right I'm just going to quickly run this now I uh, and and the reason I'm doing this is is I'm giving you some tips on how when there's something that, that you don't understand, this is how you figure it out. You put print statements in, and you just put a bunch of print statements in there, and and you 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 know filled with print statements until it's, you trace through it, um, and then after that you take out the print statements or you comment. You put comments in front of the print statements, and that then then they don't clutter up your code anymore. But but I just want to see what this looks like. Uh, and I'm going to say um, Python 3 on oh, Python test 3.py. Okay, so okay, so that works. Okay, so it does work for me to for me to do that. This just says uh, when it starts out, result is equal to zero. This is two, and this was this was n. So n is equal to two. okay. So so let's do that. I'm going to do um, a result. Equals okay, and this is going to be uh, n n equals, and then I'm going to do um, this. Now I'm going to print n, but if, I'm going to do a three here because this is after. Oh no, this is result result. So now I'm going to print result, and then I'm going to say, oh, here it's going to print the dash if the result mod two is not equal to zero. So I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna also, it prints the dash. I see what it's, I see what it's, you're, you're, you're printing a bunch of dashes. Uh, and then this, this continue uh, jumps out of the for loop. Um, <clears throat> all right, that's fine. Um, so, uh, and then, so then we're gonna end up being right back up here again. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say um, print four comma uh, result. Actually, I already have result there. So, so I'm gonna say four um, uh, print dash, just so I can see that there. And then this continue goes back up here. And then when we're all done with the, this is like the final result. Wait, sorry, Professor. What does the first number mean? In the, um, in the... All the first number is doing is it's it's just telling me where I am. See, this is all just put put in there for me just to tell me where I am because I don't want to just just you know print out a bunch of. If if I didn't have this, then I kind of wouldn't know what's what's being printed out here. So oh, okay, so, yeah, yeah. So I'm just doing this. And, and then we'll follow it through. Um, right here, I'm going to put. Um, I'm going to do a, another one. Of, 
I'm going to do another one, which is uh, this is five, five comma uh, result equals result. Okay, so let's see what this looks like when we run it. Okay, so um, we start out with result equals zero. Uh, and then at two, we're, we're uh, n equals n equals zero. zero. Uh, this one, result equals three. Do you see where I am right here? Result equals, or I'm sorry, result equals, uh, wait a minute. This is, should be result, sorry. Result equals result, result equals result. And okay, n equals n is okay. Run this again. Um, so result equals two. Okay, so it goes to th three, and then it. Um, so result is equal to at three. Result is equal to two, and here it says if result mod two. So result if result is equal to two. So two mod two is equal to zero. So this is false. This is false. So it skips out over this and it goes right to here. Okay, and that's why the next one is five. Five results equals two. See, so result equals whatever result is, it's two. And then we go back up to two. We go back up to two here. Why is this? Oh, why is this? Um, this has to do with um, this right here. Oh, oh, it's because this thing printed and and so that is <laughs> this is this too, but it doesn't do a return because of this. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put it. I'm going to make this big an asterisk just to make it. I'm going to make this an asterisk also. Just just so you can see that that's why that looks the way it does. Okay, so um, this two is this thing. See, so this five result equals two, that's five result equals two. And then this two prints, and that's why this thing, that asterisk, asterisk is there, but there's no return. There's no carriage return. So that's why this here is exactly this up here but it is the second iteration, you see n equals one. So here n equals one. So it starts out, you know, n equals zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so 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 that's, uh, this is the second iteration. And then we've got the result is equal to three. That's uh, here, three result equals three. And so that's this, three result equals three. Now result mod two, uh, now this is true. Result mod two, three mod two is one. So one is not equal to zero, so this is true. So then we're gonna to go to four and lo and behold, we do four, prints out four plus this hyphen. And then, uh, and then right here, it prints out the hyphen with the asterisk without the return. And that's what this is here, hyphen with the asterisk um, without the return. And then continue goes back up to the top here. So now we're back up here and it should be two, and n should be three now, right? So, so yes, that's what happens. We go back up here at to, wait, no, 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 two n equals two, that's this, two n equals two, and then result equals n plus two, so now result is equal to five, I guess, four. Yeah, so now at, at number three, result is equal to four, And um, so, so, so what's happening is is every other one. Um, uh, every other one we get to five. So here, this one here, since result is equal to two, and two mod two is equal to zero, then we skip right to five and we do this. So. 
So this, this happens when result is equal to two. And then uh, it's not going to happen when, when result is equal to three. When, when result is equal to three, it, when result is equal to three, it does not print this out. It just goes from here back up to here. I mean, when, when result is odd, it will, it'll do this. It, when, when result is odd, then this is true and it's gonna print the four. It, here, it's gonna print this. When result is even, which means result is two or four or six or eight, then this is gonna be false. This is gonna be false. So it's gonna skip, it's not gonna do four, it's gonna do five. Okay, so look, I just I just realized this. It's either gonna do four or it's gonna do five. It's gonna do four when result is an odd number and it's gonna do five when result is an even number. Because, because when result is, is an odd number, then this is true. And then it does this and this and does this, which brings it back up to here. When result is odd, no, when result is even like two, four, six, eight, then this is false. So then it skips out and it does five. See, so, so when result is even, it does five and, we, and when result is odd, it does four. Let's see if that's right. When result is, is even, it goes to five. When result is odd, it goes to four. When result is even, it goes to five. When result is odd, it goes to four. Result is even, it goes in. So how, how far are we supposed, okay, so, and then, okay, and then when, when result is, uh, is, um, is even, see. when result is even, it, it does the five. Yes, does the five. And here result is, and it, it prints out the result. And then um, we're done with the loop because uh, I guess we've done, um, range of seven. So, so the last one is n is equal to seven. I'm sorry, n is equal to six. So two n equals six would be the last iteration. So this is, uh, where's n? n? n equals three, n equals four, n equals five, n equals six. Okay, two n equals six is the last iteration. All right, now, now this doesn't look right because, because we've, we've gone and injected these print statements here and done a bunch of returns and stuff. So now let's just comment out these, these print statements that we added and see how it behaves. Okay, this one is supposed to be there and this one's supposed to be there and this one's there. So now let's run this and see what it looks like. Ah, so, um, Oh, we shouldn't have this asterisks either. I guess these should be a space, a space and a space. Okay. So uh, what it looks like it's doing is when result is odd, right? Then this is true. It prints out a dash. When result is even, that means this is false. It prints out the value of result. So again, when result is odd, it prints out a dash. When result is even, it prints out the value of result. So here we see uh, re result is even, so it prints out the value. Result must be odd here, it's three. So then it prints out a dash. Result is equal to four, so it prints out result. Uh, here, result is equal to five, so it prints out a dash, six, seven, six, you know, seven and eight. And then it prints out this done at the end. So I don't know. So um, what is this? Which lab was this? Thank you so much. I just, okay. We just spent so much time on it and just try to figure out what's going to on. Each other what's going on. Well, very good. You know, that explaining to each other what's going on, that's really a good thing to do. It just really helps you both think at the same time. And, and yeah, if you feel free to, you know, you know, um, 
you know, I'm whole, or I'm sorry, I, I'm, um, my office hours are, uh, do I, it's, is it, do I have what it's supposed to be here? A same day appointment by email or text. So, you know, if, if you guys would like to meet with me that day, if anybody want to meet with me that day, just email me or text me and I can probably meet with you th that day. Cause I'm just hanging around here. I got, I, I usually like to have a break between uh, an hour break between each of my things. I try to schedule it that way. So, so I am, you know, lots of times just, you know, preparing for my next lecture or, or whatever. So feel free if you guys, especially if you guys are working on something, you say, Hey, let's, let's see if we can talk to me, then, uh, you know, feel free to do that. Thank you right. so much. <laughs> All right. Very good. Okay. So let's, uh, let's get back. to. Thank the... you so much. I hope this is helps other people too, because Vincent and I, we, we're stuck in it. It's like, it's, it's almost like two people don't know what to do and ex try to explain to each other. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I'm gonna, uh, I, I'm gonna um, try to, when I work through these labs, I'm gonna try to um, um, like be sloppy, a little bit sloppy and kind of make some mistakes. So you can see what it looks like when that particular mistake is made. And then, so that way you can sort of recognize it and you can see what I look at and how I figure out what the, um, cause I, I, I don't do enough of that. You know, it's for me, I've been programming for so many years. I can just, you know, write, write the code out and then, and then, uh, sometimes I don't make any mistakes and, and then uh, it just works. And then when you guys are doing it, you doing, you try to do exactly what I'm doing. And then you, you know, forget a, a space or something's not quite right. And, and, uh, it doesn't work. And then you, you see this error thing and you don't know what, 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 what is it trying to tell me? You know, so. All right, let's uh, let's go to um, a lab here. We just don't use these uh, these extra things here very often because they're unique to Python. I mean, everything else, all these other constructs, you know, it's the same in all languages. Um, uh, some sometimes they're a little bit different. You know, you might hear me you might hear me say uh, if then else, and that's because in a lot of languages. Uh, the if there's an if and then there's that expression and then there's then there's the word then and then the the body of the then part is is underneath that and but but otherwise the constructs are the same what we've seen so far but some of these other some of these other fancy ones down here like um you know uh, uh, an else clause with a while you know that's that's uh, not that's not common in in languages and pr programming languages in general, and so um, you know you you may find time or you you may find instances where you can use these, but uh, the reason th that they're not found in other programming languages is because they aren't really necessary and they are they don't happen very often, or uh, and the, the being able to use them does not come up very often. Um, one thing that is that's that is unique in Python that's not in any other programming language is the uh, where you can do two assignments at once um, or you can uh, exchange you know you, uh, exchanging is not that's not in <laughs> that's not in any language that's unique to Python anyway uh, so let's let's uh, let's do this 515 here all right um, so uh, Make sure, I'm gonna, make sure I don't lead you astray here. Uh, okay, so in this one, count input, count input length without spaces, uh, uh, periods, exclamation points, or commas. Okay, so given a line of text, count the output the number of characters excluding spaces, periods, exclamation points, and, and commas, excluding those. So here, uh, so so we're counting characters, uh, but but we're gonna skip anything we're going to skip the so it's like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one so the output is twenty one okay so it's easy all we got to do is 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 four do a four looping through this string checking to see if it's one of these if it's one of these we don't do anything if it's not one of these then we we add one we we increment by one because we're counting 
So uh, here you read it in and you do something like um, uh, four, oh, well, you have to initialize uh, the, the count, the count, the count equals to zero. And you're gonna do four uh, each letter or each character, each character in the string user text, each character of the string, uh, you say um, uh, is if um, char uh, is now, and there's, there's several ways you can do this. I'll do a kind of a brute force way. Um, if car car is um, is not equal to um, a space, and car is not equal to an exclamation point, and car is not equal to a um, comma. Um, what, what is this? Note to count for all characters that aren't, oh. Okay, so, okay, so, so all they're saying is that if, if if it's an exclamation point, count it. So what they're saying is don't instead just look for characters. See, when you read this and look at this example, you might instead just say, well, if it's a letter, then, then count it. If it's not a letter, don't count it. Well, that's not what they're saying. You know, it could be a number, or it can be a, a exclamation, a, a question mark and so on. So, so, so that's why I'm doing it this way. Uh, and, uh, uh, char is not equal to um, the last thing, which is, um, what's the last thing? Uh, comma, a period, a period. Okay, if this is true, it's not equal to any of these things, then we want to increment the count. Okay. And when we're all done, we can print the count. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. Let's see, um, I'll just put this here. I'm gonna change it to are you listening? Mr. Jones, um, anyway, so because we're supposed to count that too. All right, so, so I'm gonna run this and see what I get. And I get 31. Uh, what happens if I just do it like what they did? I get 21. Um, now, you can also do, um, you can do if car, not in, um, you do a list, space, comma, period, exclamation point. So this is a set, this is, it's a, it's a set, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a list, it, and it's a list of four characters. It's got it's a, it's got this character, and it's got the period, and it's got the comma, and it's got the exclamation point. And so, if this is true, uh, you know, if its character is not in this, it, is not one of these, is this right? Will this work? I think this will work. No, I don't think it worked. Um, I'm, this is all right, what's, it, it, do I do, is it a set? Do I do a set? I think it must be a set or something. Uh, 
um, well, this is a good example of there being an error. And um, Python uh, in set sets. Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to see an example of in the in operator. Hmm. Uh, so that, I don't know why that. Let me do this. It, it must be something simple. This is one. Okay, I'm gonna um all right, I'm gonna do this. Set. Because that's what was here. Oh, I know. Does Does anybody know what what's wrong? Are you missing out parentheses? Uh, no, no, no. But I'm missing something. Um. Oh, you're missing a colon. Yes. <laughs> now let's now let's see all of the ways that I tried that would have worked if I would have had a colon. Uh, okay, so I don't want this. This is, gives me the opposite of what I want. Yeah, Vincent is very good at catching that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Uh, this should probably work now. Oh, I can't. Oh, not in. Not in. Not. Not in. Okay, that worked. And can I um now I had some other stuff here. Does this work? I hope that does that work. It still works. Yeah, that works. <laughs> How about <laughs> when I made it a, made him sets? Uh, probably is this yeah, they all work. Okay, great. Wonderful. All right, let's let's go to the next one. Uh, okay, so a, la a password modifier. Many user created passwords are simple and easy to guess. Write a program that takes a simple password and makes it stronger by replacing characters using the key below and appending an exclamation point at the end of the string. So um, you want to make all the I's be ones, all the A's be ampersands, and all the M's be capital. M, all the B's be eights and the S's be dollar signs. Uh, so fine, okay, let's do this. Python strings are immutable, but support string concatenation. Okay. Um, oh, okay, string concatenation. That's why they're doing this. Okay, so so in comes a word and I got to loop through the characters of the word. And if it's one of these characters, I replace it. If it's not one of these characters, then I just attach the word, just just attach the letter, whatever it is, concatenate. Um, and then go on to the next one until I'm done. So for, for some character in uh, the word, word, colon um, if if c equals um, what are they i equal one yes i'm just going to try to be lazy here <laughs> All 
All right, uh, if C equals I, um, uh, then um, yeah, uh, password concatenate onto password or one. Uh, LF C equals that. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'm going to take this and copy it. And I'm going to do. Is this going to work? Oh, it's got to be A. Oh, oh, uh, oh I got to do this. A is the next one, right? I'm 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 uh, spending too much time trying to make it easy, or try try trying to make it faster. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is, um, so it goes from from the from this letter. All the way to the next, all the way to this. And the other side is um, this. If C equals I, add that. If C equals A, add that. If C equals M, add that. If that equal that. Otherwise, password is just equal to C. I mean, just just a, a append concatenate C. Uh, and when we're all done. Password plus equals exclamation point. So let's try this. <clears throat> what did I forget? Ah, I forgot that. My program produced no output. Why? Because I didn't print it out. Okay. You can print it out. This is you just asked me this. So how? So how? But we saw. Oh yeah, good. Yes, that's we. That's what we end up trying. Thank you. I should have had this open. All right. Um, so anyway, so so all that's left is that you print it out. I'm sure that's. I'm sure that'll make it work. All right. Let's go to the next one. Output a range with income. Oh, okay. So write a program whose in, inputs two integers and you output the first integer and then subsequent increments of five, as long as the value is less than or equal to the second integer. Okay, so you're gonna read in two integers. Uh, read, you're gonna read in two integers. Uh, input uh, int one is equal to uh, input in, int input. That's going to get the first integer and then int two 
that'll get the second integer. And then we're gonna loop, uh, we're gonna print out the first one. Print out the first one. Uh, print int one comma, and then this end equals whatever. Print in one, int one, and then I'm gonna do, um, um, well, there's several ways we can do this. I think I'm gonna use a while loop. Um, yeah, I'm gonna use a while loop. Um, oh, uh, oh, oh, no, I wanna do the integer I'm gonna, no, I'll just use int one. Uh, int one, add five to int one, and then I'm going to do while int one is less than, less than or equal to, while int one is less than or equal to, less than or equal to um, int two. Then print int one, uh, the same thing. And then better make sure I uh, increment my loop variable. It's this. Oops. All right, now I could have made uh, I could have made this easier because look, this this is exactly the same as this. So something tells me uh, I can condense this. But um, let's see if this works. Minus fifteen and ten. I'll just try it with what theirs was. Minus fifteen and a ten. Is that right? Yeah, it looks pretty good. But I think you can probably, um, how about this? I'm just gonna comment this out and comment this out and see if it still works. Well, what do you know? All right, so uh, that was easy. Let's do this next one. Printing a string in reverse. Okay, so uh, write a program that takes a line of text as input and outputs the line of text in reverse. The program repeats ending until the user enters done or done or D or line of okay. For, okay. So um, if we input this, it's going to print um, H E L L. O space T, you know, so it's going to print it out backwards. Oh, look at that, it's backwards. Okay, so um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, take the string, and I'm going to go one character at a time, and and I'm going to build a new string. But and when I'm when I take the one character at a time, I'm going to take the character off the front of the of the string that was input, and when I build the new string, I'm going to attach the character onto the back, I guess, or something. I'm gonna do the opposite. So uh, first I gotta read it in. Uh, um, I'm gonna call it uh, a line of text, a line of text, line, Line O text equals uh, input. Okay, so that's going to input the line of text. And then I'm going to output a uh, reverse. Reverse string equals nothing. And I'm going to build the reverse string. So I'm going to go for each character in line O text. 
See, that's how a Midwestern, I'm from Midwest, I'm from the mid Midwest. So I, I say, oh, get a line of text. Really, it should be a line of text. Okay, so um, for each one, now I'm gonna build the reverse string and then I'm gonna print out the reverse string. So, so a reverse string uh, equals, um, I'm gonna put it on the front. I guess I gotta put it on the front, don't I? Uh, equals C plus reverse string. Let's see if this works. So each time I loop, I, I pull it off and I put it on the front. And so it's gonna end up, well, let's see what happens. Print reverse string. Hey, Professor, what is the purpose of the reverse underscore string equals the, um, the this, line, this no, line three? Oh, oh, I just have to, oh, I have to initialize it. Is there, I, I, I have to start it out at something. Okay. Yeah. So I, so I, you know, you have to, um, um, also you can't use a variable on the right side until it's defined. It's it, until it's used on the, on the left side once. So okay. if, if we were, if we didn't have this and we came to this, then in some languages, I can't remember what it is in Python. In fact, let's try it. Uh, what is in Python, but so, some languages will say, no, you can't do that. And, and other languages will just assume that you must mean that you, that you it'll assume that you, you, you must have meant to do this first. So okay. let's, let, let's see what Python does. Well, first let's see if this works. Okay. Okay, I'm so, hello. Okay, now now I'm going to try to um, comment this out and see what uh, I want to see if there's an error message. It's, it's probably going to be an error message. Python's pretty strict about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Reverse string is not defined. It's this one. All right. Well, that was pretty easy. Um, yeah. So line five is <clears throat> line five is the one that did the reversing. Yes, line five does the reversing. It 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 takes the old one and you know connects the this it pulls off the C and it puts it in front. So each time it loops, it puts it in front. In fact, let's um let's uh, print reverse string. Uh, tell you what, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's just put this in there. Wait, C doesn't need to be defined. You can just like. So C is defined. You see, I, I pull C off one at a time. I pull. Th this is what's read in. Okay. And then this takes this takes takes one character at a time, you know, and, and calls it C. Oh, okay, okay. So so let's do this. Let's do. Um, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say print. I'm gonna put it up here. So. And then that's um that's the addition sign right on line six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yes, yes, yes. In okay. in in Python, the plus means both. If it's two text, if it's two strings, it means you're concatenating them. If it's if there's two numbers, then of course you're adding them. Okay, thank you. This is one twenty. Okay. All right. So so I'm going to see this, and 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 all I've done is I've moved this in here, so it'll actually print out something every time. Uh, the, this here, it'll print out uh, before. It does the concatenation. Before it does the concatenation, it's going to print out the letter that it just pulled off and print out what the reverse string was. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. Okay, so um, this is the okay. Okay, so so it starts out with so so this is the first time. Okay, it prints the it prints the uh, H from hello. It's the the first letter prints the H and then reverse string is it, it, it's nothing right it's reverse string is nothing so that's the first one and then um, uh, and then the next time it comes around it pulls off the E and this is reverse string you know, it's, I should do this
All right, let's let's see what it looks like this way. Okay, so so we pull out. This is uh, H, and then the reverse string is nothing, so that's why there's nothing there. And so now now after H is concatenated onto reverse string, reverse string now it just is H, and it pulls off the E and concatenates the E onto the H, and it looks like this. Pulls off the L, concatenates it onto there. Pulls off the second, the next L, can, you know. And so here we're seeing these two get concatenated to this. These two get concatenated to this, all the way down to it. There's a space. See here, it's uh, here. It pulled off a space, and then this is the reverse string. See this. This is always going to be here. This one's going to be here. This one's going to be here, and so on. You know, as as we go down the line, because we're printing, printing, printing it each time, and we see reverse string just gets built up as we go down. You know, we pull off the T, then we stick it on there. Pull off the H, then we stick it on there. Pull off the E, stick it on there, and so on until we get to the very. Right. Okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. Let's do the next one. Countdown until matching dice. <laughs> okay, so here takes it takes an integer, and it it starts counting down from the integer and stopping when both digits are identical. Okay, so so we start out with a number, and then we just start subtracting one from it until the two digits are the same. So. What is two digits? How do you make what's two digits the same? That must mean the okay, it's it's two digit numbers. So if so if we have a number, uh, well let's just okay, let's just start. Um, start number I'm a, oh, num num equals um, int input. Okay, so this reads in the number, and then I'm gonna uh, what happens if we Okay, okay, then it just does it once. Okay, and this says it's an error. Uh, wait, yeah, right. Okay, so, um, so the test is, um, okay, to get the upper digit, let's do this, upper digit equals num, Uh, integer divide of 10, right? Yeah. So if you have 89, you do an integer, or 89 divided by 10 is 8.9, but it's integer divide, so it's just eight. Okay, so that's the upper digit, and the lower digit is equals num mod mod 10. So, um, we see that uh, so if we run this and we run it on 35, we get 35, the upper digit is three and the lower digit is five. So it, this works, 93, yeah, so it works. So, so that's how we get the upper digit and the lower digit. And so really what we're testing though, is we're testing if the upper digit is equal to the lower digit. We're looping until the upper digit is equal to the lower digit. So we're gonna loop, we're gonna do, uh, we're counting down. So while, while um, this is not equal to, is that gonna work? Yeah, I can, it'll work. While this is not equal to that, how's that? Well, the, I'm gonna put parentheses around it so you, it's more clear. While this is not equal to that, then um, num equals num minus one, that's all. Okay, each time let's print out Let's print out. Um, let's print out num. Print num, and at the very end we will print out num. 
And so when we print out num at the very end, then this must be false. If this is false, that means uh, that mean if this is false, that means that this is equal to this, or in other words, the upper num. This is the upper digit, and that's equal to the lower digit. So, um, so let's, let's see if this works. Run. Yeah, looks like it worked. Eleven. Ah, I didn't do this part. Okay, so you got to do that part. You got to put something in there that first looks at num and checks to make sure that it is uh, between 11 and 100. Okay. It's 26 minutes. Let's do uh, one more here. Brute force. Oh, this is a tough one. Okay, uh, let's, let's see. Um, you know, I think this won't take me longer than three minutes. I think this won't take me longer than three minutes. So, so I'm going to do the next one. This one's probably easier. Smallest and largest numbers in the list. Okay, so I skipped 520. I'll put that in the uh, in the title of the of the video. And I skip five twenty. <clears throat> Write a program that reads a little. Huh? Thank you so much. Okay, wait. I'm not. I'm gonna do one I more. Know. Okay. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Write a program that okay reads a list of integers into a list and as long as let as long as integers are greater than zero and then I'll put the smallest and largest in the list. Okay, so, so this is a pretty good one. It's 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 it's. it's uh, You'll write a lot of programs like this, okay? So you're reading in numbers until you until you read in one that's not greater than zero. Uh, and then you just display out the largest one and the smallest one. It's easy, okay? So reading in numbers, three, just keep on reading in numbers, huh? Yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna keep on, okay, so I start out with the, the smallest number, the smallest, equals, um, okay, so I gotta keep track of the smallest number and the largest number, is there? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, how, how do I Python a largest number? Largest integer, largest integer. What's the largest integer? All languages do this. What is the largest integer in Python? Oh, sys.maxint. Yeah, it's sys.maxint is the largest. Okay, so the reason I'm looking for the largest integer is, is because I want to initialize these values. And so I'm trying to, so as I go through, uh, I'm gonna keep track of the smallest number. Well, I have to initialize the smallest number as a really big number. So the first one that comes along, it's gonna be the smallest one. And then after that, if smaller ones come, that's fine. But, but I don't wanna initialize this too small because what happens if all the numbers I read in are smaller than that number, I won't be able to, I won't have anything to, no, 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 no. If, if I initialize this number too small, and all the numbers I read in are bigger than that number, then I'll never be able to um, capture it. So you'll, you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna say, um, instead of trying to find the Python, Python, is there a limit to the size? It doesn't say. So I'm just gonna say that no integer can be bigger than this number. One million, uh, one billion, one trillion, okay? No number can be bigger than that, okay? And then I'm gonna say the, so that's gonna keep track of the smallest number and to keep track of the largest number, uh, no number can be uh, smaller than zero, right? Because, so I'm gonna say it's minus one. So the largest number is minus one. And now I'm gonna start reading in numbers until I read in a number that's, uh, that's uh, 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 
zero or less. So first I'm gonna read in a number, uh, num equals int of input. Okay, and then I'm gonna do while um, num is greater than zero, then do this and say um, if the number is smaller than what I already have as the smallest, I have a new smallest, then set smallest equal to the number. Okay. Uh, how, um, now, now I can do LF or I can just put an if statement because if it's, if the number is the small, well, okay. I'm just going to do it. if num is larger than what I have on record as the largest. If that's true, then I want to set the largest equal to this new large. Okay, so, so the first one is if I should happen to come across a new smaller number, smaller than smallest, and if I, if I have, then record it. Uh, if I come across a new larger number than the one I have already have as the largest, then record that new number as the largest. And then at the end, when we finally are done, we can print out two and two, smallest and then the largest. Print. Um, Uh, print um, <clears throat> smallest comma um, and largest. Okay, so uh, let's try it with these numbers right here. Copy. What did I not do? Oh, I'm in an infinite loop. Do you see what I have, see what's missing? Does anybody see what's, you see that this is an infinite loop, right? I couldn't run your program to completion. Could be a temporary system issue, could be. Could be our fault. However, could be your program never finished due to an infinite loop. Infinite recursion. Is a break? Waiting for an in. Okay. Um, yeah. See, see, I never read in the next number. I just well, number is great. I just just number num never changes. So 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 I have to read in a new number. So I I, I read in the first one, and then I check if while and but I don't read. I just test it, and then I don't read in it. I got so I got to read in the. So, so after I'm done testing num, I got to read in a new num. So, so let me just do, actually I have to do this again. Copy. Okay, so, so you see that, that, that num has to change. And before I put that in there, num stayed, num always stayed what the first num was. So num just stayed there with 10 and it kept on looping. And it probably set the smallest equal to 10 and set the largest equal to 10 and just kept on looping. But anyway, so, so this should work now that I put that in there. Oh, what? Oh, wow. It, it should have known what I meant. Okay, there we go. And if you want, you can um, you know, go ahead and... It, and print out, um, you know, print uh, new smallest. And here we can do print out, print new largest. And we'll put here print processing uh, num. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Okay, so it starts with 10. It sets the new smallest equal to 10, sets the new largest equal to 10. Then it starts processing five. It sets the new smallest equal to five. Starts processing three, sets the new smallest equal to three. Starts processing 21 sets the new largest equal to 21, 
starts processing two, sets the new smallest equal to, uh, to two. Now, now you notice each time we change something, right? So what happens if we put, let's put two, let's put one, and then let's put 50, okay? And run and see what happens. Process is 10, got a new smallest, got a new largest. Process is one, got a new smallest. Process is 50, got a new largest. Nothing, 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 and on one and 50. So anyway, um, that's pretty close. Uh, do you need to do anything else? I don't know. Um, you can run, uh, you can submit it and see if that works. And uh, do you have any questions? Thank you so much. It's a great right. session. <laughs> All right. Good. Thank I you will so see much. You. Uh, yep. And so we have another class tomorrow, don't we? Yes, we do. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Yeah. Bye-bye.